Well, welcome. It is Thursday, June 3rd, and Calgary is in a bit of a heat wave. So uh, I'm very happy to be downstairs in my basement, my cool basement on this hot, hot day. It won't last for long. It never does. But, uh, you know, we get we get the highs, we get the lows, we get the extremes and everything in between. So I hope you are having a good day and I hope the weather is pleasant where you are and everybody is well. We're going to play with the summertime collection today because it is starting to feel like summer. Uh, I know my friends from down under, they're, you know, coming into their winter season, right? So they're, they're flipped. Um, so, you know, they might not be playing with summertime collection as much as looking ahead to, uh, to winter activities. So, okay, well, I think we've got lots of ladies on. We're a couple minutes in here. So let's get started and I'll tell you what I'm going to be playing with. Uh, if you joined me a couple weeks ago, you know that we played with the sunny days template and we did some kind of soft brush stenciling. Those of you who, who love mixed media probably as much as I do know that, you know, I'm excited to play with the uh, summertime journal template. So we're going to play a little bit with that. I'm going to show you a couple of ideas I have. And then we're just going to put together a really quick layout. And I have to say that, you know, those of you who tell me that you like process videos, this one is really going to be a process because... I am not 100% sure what I'm doing today. I had hoped to get back in time to uh, to plan out my, my layout for today, and uh, I really didn't. So we're gonna kind of fly by the seat of our pants. It's truly going to be a, a process thinking about what uh, what I'm gonna do as I'm doing it. So, all right, well, let me switch you over and uh, let's see what we're gonna be playing with here. So. So many of you have already seen the beautiful summertime collection. Um, it came out in the middle of May. It was the mid-month collection release. And um, the paper, the Fast to Fab inspired paper, the variety mat pack stickers, and the laser cut borders uh, all came out there in the middle of the month. And then just with the June release, we have, and I'm just reaching for a piece of cardstock here to show you a little bit better. We have the new uh, summertime journal template. So you can see all of those fun, fun things that you can do, uh, trace, color in. I just love these templates. You know, I have so much fun coloring and tracing and doing mixed media, um, and I can't resist. So I also, of course, love the pens. And we've got two new colors that came out just a couple of days ago. Again, with the release of the summertime uh, journal template, we got Splash, which is a pretty blue. And uh, just, just so you kind of know, it is very similar to the light blue cardstock. This is light blue, which isn't too, too different from um, Cloud. And then this is the Summer Sun. And let me grab a piece of yellow. So that's the Goldenrod uh, cardstock. So again, a very, very good match there. So you'll, you'll see that those two colors go well with our cardstock. Now I'm going to be playing with them, but I have to say that the splash for my for my tastes, I guess, and again, it, it goes with this collection. But for my tastes, I think that the pool color, which was an exclusive uh, pen that came out with one of the secret boxes, um, or maybe it was a promo. I think maybe it was a promo pen. Sorry, um, that one. Or was it Secret Box? My my CM sisters there, tell me if this turquoise um, color came out with the last Secret Box or if it was part of a promo. Um, but anyways, I think that that turquoise color picks up the colors in the summertime collection much, much better. So I'm actually going to be using these two colors today to play with. But just know that the um, most recent one that was released was this um, splash color and this one is a retired color okay Vicky's telling me secret box okay so it was this last secret box all right so just know that I'm gonna be playing with those ones and 
again, you know that I love my pens. So these are all of the different colors that the dot tip pens have come out with over the last, you know, year or so. Last summer we had, was it these ones? I think it was all of these colors. No, I think it was these colors. And then we had these ones in the fall, right? And then we've just sold out of the orange one. So again, my love for pens means that every time a color comes out, I grab it, okay? All right, so we're gonna be playing with these two. We're gonna be definitely playing with some of these for my layout uh, and maybe some stickers. And I think I might even use this beach day as a title. That's just kind of in the back of my, of my head. And I'll just show you that the photos that I pulled out were um, photos when the boys first went to the ocean. So I thought that those would work well. But let's go ahead and play with the template just a little bit before we get started. Okay, so I've just got some scrap cardstock here. And you don't need a little craft mat, but I have this one and it's just a slick surface. So what you can do is um, use like a lid from a plastic container, like a, you know, a Tupperware type of container, yogurt, that kind of thing. And it will work really, really well. And you might want some water. This is just a little spritzer bottle and you might want a little, you know, cosmetic sponge or a little dauber. If you have these little finger daubers, um, you can use that as well. What else are we gonna use? We are also going to use the small custom cutting system template because if you have a look, that is the perfect size for this round journaling box that we're gonna make, okay? So we're gonna use that and the green blade uh, I am going to pull out my black dual tip pen and the only other thing that I'm going to be using today is just a little brush. Again, you don't need any of these things, um, but I'm just going to show you a couple of things that I've been having fun playing with. So I thought the first thing we could do was to make this little journal box. And so I'm just going to pop this down here just white cardstock. I'm just going to pop it down here uh, on the bottom corner of my scrap piece of cardstock. And I'm going to take the fine tip part of my pen and just go around, basically just tracing everything. Okay. I'm just going to trace out the design. Just takes a couple of minutes here. One of the things that I like about tracing and doing mixed media and things is it's just you lose yourself in the doing you, you you really stop thinking about everything else and you just do okay so I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the little um, dots there for this flower and then I'm just gonna trace all the way around the flower Oops, I made a little mistake there, not a big deal. Not the end of the world. And just a couple more petals here. Okay, now before I move that, I could take my uh, my juicy, as I like to call them, my juicy tip pen uh, side and just go through and kind of color that in. But I think I'm actually going to do a little bit of, of water coloring in. So I'm not going to color in, but the, the dot tip side is the best side for if you wanted to color, okay? All right, so if you had a layout that you were doing on you know, white cardstock, you can see that that would be just a lovely little design to just draw right onto your, your page. But I'm going to cut it out and I'm going to use it on a page. So again, I mentioned that the smallest uh, custom cutting circle fits the circle of the design perfectly. And then if you have a, the red blade, it will cut very close. If you have the green blade, it'll cut, you know, just a, a little bit wider. And of course the blue blade will cut the largest sort of white border. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the green blade. And what I'm gonna have to do is cut around until I get, you know, 
I, I'm going to have to kind of look from the side to see where my blade is going to stop. But that's an easy thing to do. And I could actually just start it over here. I'm just looking from the side. Okay, and I've got my blade in the track. I'm going to go all the way around. And now I'm just going to lean over again so that I can look and see where I need to stop. Okay, so now I've cut out my perfect lovely circle. I'm just going to need some scissors. I'm just going to cut this away from the back paper here, make it a little easier. And now I'm just going to kind of try to keep a similar size of border all the way around. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is a handmade embellishment that we're making for our page. So it's not going to be perfect, but that's pretty good. Okay. So I'm going to set that aside and I know that on camera, you can't really see it that well, but I'm going to set that aside and let that dry. Cause I'm going to do a little bit of watercolor painting with that and I don't want it to run. So I'm going to keep that off to the side. Okay. Well, let's talk about a couple other things. I mentioned that, um, you could use the, the dot tip of your pen to actually kind of color in. So we've got this lovely large tropical flower and I'm just going to take, this is the splash pen. I'm just going to take the, that juicy dot tip. I'm just going to go in. I'm just going to color in. And I guess really, you know, the only trick that I would say about this is just try to get a nice, um, even strokes. You know, keep your strokes kind of going in the same way when you're coloring and then your your pen will blend really well. But this goes so fast because, you know, you're you're filling it in small area, fat nib on your pen. It goes really, really fast. I'm almost done here. Last one. Oh, that one goes all the way around. Okay. Okay. So then carefully lift it off so you don't smudge it. And you have a really beautiful design that you can just, you know, you can either cut out or again, like I mentioned, if you're working on a piece of white cardstock, you can just draw right onto your cardstock. Now, if you do that, you probably will have a little bit of ink on your, um, stencil on your template. So just, I always keep a package of baby wipes, you know, all purpose wipes, baby wipes, that kind of thing. The other thing that works beautifully is the new stamp chamois. Uh, you can just wet it and then use that to clean off your ink as well. Okay. So that's another way we can do it. Now let's play a little bit with some of these smaller designs. So we've got some of these little diamonds. We've got some little hearts. We've got some pretty stars. So I was thinking that, do it over here so it doesn't smudge. Um, I was thinking that if you did a kind of, again, like a stencil or a, a pouncing motion with this little dauber or a makeup sponge, uh, you could really just create a beautiful background or a border on a page. So I'm gonna take the juicy dot tip end and just draw a little puddle onto your slick surface and just one little spritz of water and that kind of activates it and makes it more like a workable ink. And then I'm just gonna pick some up with my dauber and I'm just really gonna quickly pounce and move it around so fast i'm not even really worried about getting it into all of the different areas and you can see that you could cover and make kind of a, a background very very quickly so we've got that there's some stars okay and let's just wipe that off let's do uh let's use the the blue since we've got it out before i do my layout with the turquoise color 
little puddle of water there and let's use the little sponge and maybe do some diamonds and one of the really fun things is to overlap your designs so now I'm just gonna go in with the blue and I'm gonna make some blue diamonds over top of my yellow stars and you're gonna see that where they kind of overlap you might get a little bit of a color um, change. We've got a little bit of green happening. You can see I've got a little bit of a mistake there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put that mistake right into one of the diamond shapes and just keep pouncing. And one over here. So I love those kind of, you know, stars and diamonds. Uh, that would be a really pretty background that you could make, you know, for uh, a baby page. Lots of different things that you could do with that. So I love that idea as well. And then one more thing I thought I would show you before we get to my layout is um, this little thought bubble. I thought it would be a perfect little cloud because you don't have to include those three little dots. You can just um, use the, the fluffy cloud shape. So I wanted to try and do just a bit of kind of watercolor uh, with that. So what I thought I would do again is just make my little puddle of paint and just take my brush this time and I'm just going to kind of outline it. I'm not even going to draw around it or anything. I'm just going to kind of outline it with my brush, pick up some more of my inky paint and just kind of, you know, make little fluffy sort of marks. And then I'm going to actually spray right on my paper and it's going to kind of create a real nice sort of watercolor watercolor look. So let's just dab in a few more little bits of blue. Carefully take that off. And we have a fun little cloud. So, you know, you could let that dry. You could take a piece of white cardstock and do all kinds of different, uh, you know, little mixed media things. Just have fun with your pens and the stencil. And then let this dry and you can come back and, um, you know, cut those pieces out. Again, that would be a lovely, lovely um, embellishment. You could, you know, make a full border of this. You can wait till your little watercolor cloud dries and then just add it to your page. So I love playing around with that. And uh, again, there's so many fun uh, things on this template. And I didn't even get to, you know, the palm tree or the turtle or anything like that. But before we leave that, I want to just really quickly go back in and try to sort of watercolor uh, the flower. So I'm just going to clean off my brush here. Again, just some water and my little trusty baby wipe to clean it off. And I'm just going to go in and pick up the, uh, the yellow now. And I'm going to add it in... Um, into the flower and the great thing about our pens is that they're what's known as archival right so archival means that they won't they're water resistant once they dry so if you take you know any of the pens a black pen your colored pens etc and you draw something or outline something with it and then let it dry completely it won't smear or smudge if you use uh, you know something like this watercolor technique um, on it afterwards so you can really go to town here and create super custom little decorations for your page so I won't finish that off but you can see that all I'm doing is kind of using the brush to color in instead of using the tip of the pen and again you can definitely if you don't want to get into um, if you don't want to get into you know mixing uh, water and stuff you can just go in and color the fine tip um, gives you a little bit more control but the dot tip you know will give you a lot more coverage and a bit more um, bit more depth of color it'll be a little bit more intense Okay, so either way, 
you can definitely mix your colors, you know, outline with one, trace an outline with one, and then, um, and then go back in and color it with another. You can see that this part that I colored in is much more intense than sort of my, my watercolor background. Okay, so those are just a few really quick fun things that you can try uh, with your with your watercolor sort of techniques with your dot tip pens. And I just see that uh, there's a question here. So this brown thing that I have, the brown surface, it's, it's just a craft mat. It's a flexible craft mat. It's kind of sticky on this side so it doesn't move around. And then it's just super, super slick on this side so that I can, you know, mix media, mix paints, that kind of thing. And, um, yeah, it, it, it just beads up. It doesn't, it's non-absorbent. So if you don't have this, you can definitely use like a little plastic lid from a container. That will work just fine. Okay, so let me just put that away and get all this stuff out of the way. So I hope you have fun with that. That's, um, you know, that's something I thought would be really, really fun to play around with. So let's get into a really quick layout. And this is, uh, I tell you, this is going to be interesting. I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see what is going to happen here because I, uh, I really just picked the photos and kind of tried to do a little bit of a paper matching. Uh, the idea for this one came when I saw the little fish. Okay, so on the bottom of the template, you've got this little sort of fish border. So I was playing around and I thought that you could make a really fun border using the same techniques we just did. I traced the little fish with my black dual tip pen and then I went ahead after it dried and added the, um, the yellow and the blue. Now when I kind of came in and started looking at it, uh, that's when I started to realize that a lot of the colors in the summertime collection are more of the turquoise color rather than this blue. So I think I will probably need to do another border, so to speak, but fill it in with my turquoise color. But I, my idea was, is that I would uh, have my little border of fish, okay? And then the two pictures of the boys here, I think Sam was about two and a half or three, and Grayson was probably four or five. And this was their first time at the ocean. So we were out on uh, Vancouver Island. They went into the ocean and they were looking down and they're like, oh my God, there's little fish swimming around. <laughs> they're, what are these things? These don't happen in pools. You know, what are these? So Grayson especially was kind of freaked out. Sam was just, uh, you know, enamored with it. So I thought what I would do is kind of put these photos in here as if the boys were looking down at the little fishies swimming below them. And that's when I realized that, you know, maybe this wasn't the right color. Uh, I also have a picture of them just kind of going into the ocean for the first time. So I thought I would include that. Maybe something like this. You know me, I like to have everything kind of lined up. And then I thought that I could uh, trim down this and have the beach day as my smaller sort of title. And then I thought, well, you know what? Let's see what else we could do. Um, with the, with the uh, stickers and all of the borders, I thought, well, I really like that summertime um, big sunshine. But again, the colors weren't quite right. It was more the turquoise and yellow greens than, than the blues. So I thought, well, you know what? I could cut out the opposite side. I can do a little bit of fussy cutting and just cut out that bright, big summer sun. And then I thought, well, what will I do for kind of some ocean waves? And again, we've got this lovely border from the laser cut. And if you can see, one side is a more of a deep sort of... Um, deeper turquoise. This one's a little bit more of a blue. Okay, so I think maybe I might do something like that. And then I, I saw this one and I thought this was much more appropriate than beach day because it was really just the fact that this is a summer I'll always remember with people I'll never forget. So that made me think maybe I will trim this down a little bit. 
pop this in as my title and then fussy cut my son. So that's my plan. So let's, let's just do it. Let's just get in here and start kind of fussy cutting this sun. And I know some of you are going to say, oh, that's a, you know, you're going to waste the summertime. Um, I've told you before that I usually get multiple packs of the embellishments because, yeah, I, you know, I, I, I'm so frugal with my paper that I want to make sure that I have you know, enough embellishments to make lots of, of layouts with the collection. So I have another uh, border pack on order and I'm sure I will use the, you know, the side that says summertime on another layout. So no worries. This one is going to work really well for this layout. And I'm sure that I will find another layout that I can use the summertime on. Um, I just saw a comment as I glanced up there about um, summer or beach paper pack that isn't, yeah, that isn't tropical. We go to a lake. Yeah, and, and that's one of my problems too is that, uh, you know, even in Canada, our oceans are not the gorgeous sort of aqua tropical color, as you can see, right? Uh, it's very blue. And I also... I also had printed off some photos from Osoyoos. And again, lots and lots of that, you know, really, really uh, darker, deeper blue, not the turquoise at all. So I hear, I hear what you're saying there. So, all right. So I think that's going to go like that. Let's get this photo trimmed down to like a four by four. Alrighty, I've got my little photo trimmer out. I think that should be good. Some of the title is going to overlap a little bit, so I'm going to trim it just off a little off center. Right, so like that, that, that. I'm going to pop up on some foam squares. And as I said, I'm going to redo this little border and use the turquoise. So let's just give that a bit of a try so that I can sort of test the color. Oh, I put my craft mat away. Let's get that out and get out my turquoise. Mix it up real quick. Um, I always keep my craft mat handy and I keep my little spray bottle of water handy and then I can, I can, you know, do my little watercolor experiments anytime. All right. So that's the turquoisey color. Just touch. I'm really just touching it into the, the area. And the nice thing is, is that the, the pen sort of acts like a bit of a stopper. And it really just helps the, the watercolor, the ink, so to speak, stay in place. And you can see that if I pick up a little bit more, it gets a little darker. If I, um, you know, mix a little bit more water in there, it becomes a little bit lighter. You can see how light that is now, right? So you can, the nice thing about watercolor is you can really choose how deep or how light you want it. Okay, so I think that that's going to be a much, much better, a much, much better match. Yeah, that's going to pick up all of those turquoisey colors in the border and in the uh, embellishments. Okay, so that's, that's kind of the basic layout. And I think because I'm going to have to redo this, I might actually trace more of the fish so that they're, you know, covering the whole border and I won't have these sort of empty areas. So I'm just going to take a, uh, a little two inch, two inch piece of cardstock there. Uh, where's my, and I think I'll just kind of, you know, move the fish up and down and sort of trace them as I go. Okay. And then really all I need is, um, you know, maybe a little bit of journaling. I've got some stickers. I've told you guys before, I always buy two, um, two things of pictures, uh, of stickers, sorry. So, you know, it could be picture perfect. We've got splash zone, you know, a little thing like that. Uh, it could be get your suits on, right? 
again, I agree, these are very tropical sort of themed, so you may not find uh, as much as you, as as much to go with a lake, but you know, a little beach, a little beach bag, all of those kind of things should work, or even the sunglasses. Um, yeah, I, I probably wouldn't use a tropical flower because even though it's beautiful with the colors, uh, it doesn't work with the sort of the story that I'm telling, okay? So that's going to be my page. And um, as I said, after I sign off here in a minute, I'm going to redo this border, finish it off with that turquoise and yellow instead of the splash and yellow. And then I will post my, uh, I will post my, uh, my little, my little layout for you a little bit later on. Okay. So let's just switch back here. And let me see what we've got. Yeah, um, even Connie's saying, even for me in Florida, the non-tropical beach pack would be useful. We go to lakes and rivers as well as the beautiful, more tropical Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, so again, not all summer is, it's not always going to be tropical, right? So I, I get what you're saying for sure. Uh, Jackie's saying, I love this idea. Yeah, give it a try, Jackie. I'd love to see what you come up with. And Patty's saying, same thing. Our oceans in New England aren't all, aren't turquoise blue either. Yeah. Uh, I use them for all my lake photos. Yeah, I, I think, you know, again, you can do a little bit of, um, you know, adapting uh, and changing things around a little bit. Um, you know, for me, one of the things I always talk about my my people in my um, Scrap Your Stash 2021 Mission Possible uh, last month, they were focusing on repetition. So again, as long as you're repeating the colors in different areas. So even though in my photos, there wasn't a lot of that turquoise color um, because I'm bringing it in in the embellishments. As long as I repeat it in a couple of different places, it will all start to blend together. It's when you have, you know, mostly blue and then just one, you know, blob of turquoise, then that's when it stands out and it doesn't look like it works. So if you repeat it and put it intentionally in a few different places, that's when it starts to come together and you start to to make sense of it all okay oh good okay nice layout thanks for all the ideas you're welcome i really hope you try it like you know again it's the art teacher in me that just loves to play with the products and again you just zone in you forget everything else that's going on because you're just having fun you know playing and creating and you're just focused on what you're doing and again whether it turns out beautifully whether it's just a little experiment whether you can use it on a page or it's just a little learning uh, experience for another time it's just so much fun so i do hope you give it a try and you don't have to have you know the new the new colors you can use any colors and you can definitely use um geez i've got some i've got some really old ones here right so you can use this was a red from you know the um the the five pack that came out you know this is another brand this was the Ani and Zoe. So, I mean, that is really, you know, quite a bit older. But again, anything that you have a little bit of a, if you've got a bolder end on it, you can draw your little puddle of ink with almost any marker, add a little bit of water. You just can't do it with um, Copic markers because they are alcohol based. So obviously the alcohol won't, uh, won't mix with the water. Um, but any, you know, any uh, water soluble marker, any water based pigment ink that will work. Okay. All right. Megan's saying not a huge fan of templates, but you're changing my mind. I'm trying. I'm trying to. <laughs> Jenny's saying the same thing. It's a rarity for me. You make it look so easy. Yeah. Go and grab a piece of, you know, white cardstock, just a scrap, get a little lid container, get out your pens and just a little again even if you don't have a spritz ball this i just got from the dollar store and i keep it handy all the time but just get a little container of water and a paintbrush from the dollar store you know or if you've got kids around um you know just grab their paintbrush uh, a makeup sponge uh you've probably seen me do the smoosh technique where you use just a, the plastic bag from um you know from one of the embellishment kits Right, so you don't need a lot of fancy uh, artist quality materials. The, these are just fun things to try and to add a little bit of personality, a little bit of a different sort of look 
uh, and more custom sort of look to your pages. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Patty. Yeah, exactly. A little plastic lid just, um, and daubers again, the, um, if you don't have daubers, you can get daubers at, uh, Michael's like a craft store, check your dollar store. Sometimes they have a lot of really good sort of, I wouldn't use the 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 paints and the inks and stuff from Dollar Store, but you know they'll have things like makeup sponges. They'll have things like the little brushes. They'll have things like the like the spritz bottles, right? So for two or three dollars, you can you can go to town. I actually bought. Um, Sometimes I use a palette knife when I'm doing some other projects and the dollar store had a package of like five palette knives, plastic palette knives for a dollar. So yeah, you never know what you find. So a plastic lid from your kitchen, plastic bag, anything like that, anything that will not absorb water. That's all you need. Okay. All right. So I hope you give that a try. I want to let you go here in a second, but before we do, I want to remind you this is going to be so much fun. The summer mother load. My summer course just opened for registration the other day. We're going to make 31 layouts in 31 days together. Okay. So, and it's $31 Canadian. So you can have a look at the, um, go, just go to shop.organizedandcreativemom.com, scroll down to courses, and then you'll see it right in there. I will try to remember to post the link in the comments, but this is going to be a good time every morning at 10 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time. I'm going to be either having um, a little Facebook Live with you or I'll be posting a pre-recorded video. We'll have a prompt, a video, and a chance for a prize each and every day during July. So again, L-O-A-D stands for lay out a day, right? So lay out a day. So the summer mother load is 31 layouts in 31 days. So I really hope a lot of you join me. Uh, I think we're already over, uh, you know, 100 ladies who jumped on and registered. If you are a one, two, three insiders, don't forget insider don't forget you can use your insider access code to get 20 percent off the course uh check inside your uh email or inside your uh our facebook group in the pinned post the announcements there for a reminder of the code and then you can enter that and get 20 percent off so but hopefully you know 31 dollars. i have really thought about what what do i want the price to be 31 dollars. it's basically you know a buck a day sort of thing 31 different prompts 31 layouts 31 videos 31 chances at prizes plus a chance at the grand prize for those of you who complete 31 layouts in 31 days. So it's going to be a really, really fun time. And I hope that you join me. Okay. Carrie's already signed up. Yeah. Lots of you have. So I'm thrilled that you're going to be joining me. I'm home all of July for, um, because Grayson's taking summer school. So we'll be home. We're not going anywhere. We, we actually might be somewhere on Canada day. Um, so my first video on July 1st might be on location uh, from another uh, another uh, place. So Courtney, I will message you and we'll, we'll take care of that. Okay, no worries, no worries. But yeah, so I'm going to be home and I thought what better way to spend it with all my scrappy friends every day and get some layouts done. So uh, Hazel's asking, is it double page spreads or single? So there are seven different kinds of prompts that kind of rotate through. One is a single page sketch, one is a word prompt, one is an image prompt, one is a supply prompt, one is a technique prompt, one is a double page sketch prompt, and the last one is an either or prompt where you get to choose between two different sort of opposite ideas. So to answer, you'll be doing some single page and some double page prompts. So uh, you'll get, I think, I think you get nine sketches throughout the whole thing, but every day you get a prompt and a video with me. You're going to get sick and tired of seeing me. I tell you, you know, people are saying, Oh, I'm so excited to see you every day. You're going to get sick and tired of me. I just know it. I just know it. <laughs> uh, advisors on my team, Kim, do not need to register. You know that, um, if you are a CM advisor, who's on my personal team here in Canada, you get access to all of my courses all of the resources, all of the layout guides, etc. You do not need to enroll or pay for anything else, okay? 
Megan's going to try, I'm, I'm assuming she's going to try the, uh, some of the pen techniques, so that will be fun. Make sure you post those for us, Megan. Show us what you come up with, okay? And Jackie's saying, oh, never. Thanks, Jackie. You're sweet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, now that I've reminded you about that, I encourage you to go and get out your pens and play around a little bit. And again, do show us what you come up with if you use this template. Uh, you know, for my friends in Australia who are just kind of coming out of their fall season, maybe you're going to use uh, the Hello Autumn journaling template and try some fun apples and, you know, fall type uh, uh, leaves and icons, that kind of thing. You can get out any stencils and your markers and just play. And I hope you have a great time. Okay. All right, ladies, thank you so much for joining me today. I know I've kept you long today. I've kept you 45 minutes, but we had lots of fun. I'll be sure to post my finished layout a little bit later. Make sure you guys post yours as well or any little projects and, and experiments that you do. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. I learn and am inspired by you uh, guys as well. So thanks very much. I will see you uh, again in a couple of weeks. Um, yeah, for, for the next uh, That Thursday thing. And who knows what we'll do? Who knows? We'll, we'll see what happens then. Okay. All right. Take care, everybody. See you later. Bye-bye for now.